Income tax, 2023, 2024. Child and dependent care expenses credits. Do you have household employees? Get ready and some coffee because we'll need to handle some perspiration if we're gonna push through, persevere with income tax preparation. Most of this information can be found in publication 503, Child and Dependent Care Expenses Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're at the bottom part of the income tax formula where the credits live. Remember in the first half of the income tax formulas, basically a funny income statement, the bottom of which we find the equivalent. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Equivalent of net income, that being the taxable income. Taxable income, therefore, basically being the bottom line of the income statement, part of the income tax formula, but it's only half the battle, half the formula. We still have the second half, of the income tax formula where we take that taxable income calculate the tax based on it not using a flat tax rate but a progressive tax system to get to the tax before credits and other taxes we then of course have to take into consideration the credits and other taxes other taxes may include things like self-employment tax if you're dealing with a self-employed schedule c individual for example Credits being good like deductions, however, if you have a dollar deduction, that's simply going to decrease the taxable income and the benefits you get from it will be dependent on the tax rate only getting part of that dollar as a benefit. But if you got the full dollar deduction, you would get the full dollar benefit if you have the tax liability in order to consume that dollar bit when we're talking about the credits that are the uh credits up here, the non-refundable credits. That would get us to the ta total tax, the tax liability. Then we take into consideration the payments, such as W-2 withholdings, estimated tax payments, and the refundable credits, which are credits that can take the tax liability below zero and therefore acting not like a tax in that case, but as a benefit, welfare, safety net type of program that will finally get us to the bottom line of the tax refund or the tax that is due. We're looking at the child independent care expenses. This is form 2441, not to confuse this credit with the child tax credit, which is the first credit that typically comes to mind when dealing with a child. Here we're thinking about the credit where we might have expenses that we're paying to take care of the child, but in theory, those expenses are being paid in order to allow us to work and therefore, they're kind of like work-related expenses in that case, which could give some justification for the, for the credit in this case is the general idea. That would flow through to the Schedule C where we have the additional credits and payments. Part number one, non-refundable credits. Line number two, credit for child and dependent care expenses. Form 2441, line 11. Here is the Form 1040. We're looking at page number two and the tax and credits section, the non-refundable area. Line 20, amount from Schedule 3. All right. So we've talked about if we're going to be paying someone in order to take care of the child to free us up to work, that could take a few different formats. One, it could be that we have someone coming to our home and working for us. Or two, we might have an outside institution that basically that's what they do, possibly in like a preschool situation or something where we're paying uh, for, for an external provider and or we might have something that's happening through our work uh, where we have some providing that's being uh, done through or with the help of our employer. So if we think about a situation where we have someone coming to our home to take care of the child, 
then we run into this question of is that person going to be a household employee because if they're a household employee then you would think you might have to deal with wages types of situations now this is a little bit confusing because normally when we think about employees we're thinking about an employer employee situation where the employer is typically going to be a business or possibly a not for profit but usually a business they have a profit objective and as part of that profit objective they hire employees which are legitimate business expense or deductions because they're being hired in order to help with the objective of revenue generation but here we're thinking of course as a home what's the objective of a home not really profit generation per se but rather basically to live well just to manage the home for a good well-being within the home but you still you might hire someone in order to help you out with that particular objective and in that sense the person you're hiring to do whatever we need to do to manage the home is kind of like an employee and in that situation and of course the irs would like to structure things in an employee employer situation why because if you are an employer the irs can force you to basically do the withholdings of the employees and manage and oversee and double check basically rat out to some degree the employees and the earnings that they have and possibly force you to withhold the earnings to make sure that they pay their taxes now how does this normally work well the, the government usually is going to say hey do you want a deduction for the wages expense if they are an employee in a normal for-profit business we are of course going to say yes of course we want the deduction it's a huge expense to us we need that and the IRS will say well if you want the deduction we need you to basically rat out the employees tell us what their earnings were so if you get a tax benefit we go after them for the income side of things not only that but we want you to also uh withhold the money from their wages for them so that we're making you into our tax uh collector in that case so that's that's going to be the general idea with a personal situation it's it might be a little bit harder for the irs to regulate because normally if it was for personal purposes i i don't need the deduction because it would be personal if i hire someone to take care of my house it's not for me to generate revenue i don't get a write-off on it typically but with children taking care of the children we might get a write-off because now we have these credits that are going to be related to it so once again you would think the IRS would have some more leverage in that case saying well do you want a credit how do you how do we get the credit well you have to tell us who you paid so we can make sure to have income on their side and you also might have to deal with withholdings and then we have the whole other issue of the social security medicare taxes which becomes a problem because there's an employee and an employer portion to those taxes it's complex to calculate payroll if you just have like one employee or something like that that's a household uh, employee so these are questions that come up with the household employee situation all right so if you pay someone to come to your home and care for your dependent or spouse and you control not only the uh what work is done but how it is done that person is probably a household employee and you may need to file schedule h form 1040 with your tax return and pay household employee taxes so why does it mean that they're basically an employee notice the other question is are they a contractor or an employee if they were a contractor then you would think that you might have to pay give them like a 1099 type of form because again you gave them money if you were a business and you hired a contractor you'd have to give them typically a 1099 type of form again that's a little bit difficult to regulate uh for certain types of businesses where you're paying them for personal goods meaning if i go to get my hair cut it's going to be difficult for the irs to tell me i have to give the person who cut my hair a 1099 because i'm not getting a tax benefit for getting my hair cut right so you can see how it's a little bit harder for them to get the leverage whereas if i was paying them to get my hair cut and a two thousand dollar haircut so i can then write it off because i'm going to be in the movies or something i don't know <laughs> then it would then the iris is going to say well if you want to write that haircut off you get you have to tell us who you paid right with the 1099 because now it would be a business type of expense similarly here we have a household employee which could be a, a 1099 but if we tell them what to do on a day-to-day -day basis 
as in a job, the IRS would like to categorize them as, in essence, an employee, right? So if you are a household employer, so now you're the employer of the household employee, you will need an uh, EIN. So that's an employee identification number uh, to, to deal with the payroll kind of situation. So if the individual who works in your home are self-employed, you aren't liable for any of the taxes d discussed in this section. So in other words, now you have to have the question of, are they self-employed, in which case they handle their own taxes, they're an independent, in essence, contractor, or are they an employee, in which case you have, the IRS is gonna wanna be more liable on you to handle these things. And if the IRS was to audit you or something, they are most likely gonna be leaning towards making you the employer because they want you to be responsible to be their tax person, right? And so if you say that they are not an employee, you have to be ready to make that argument in the event of an audit and say, this is why they are a contractor because they have some autonomy over their schedule. I'm not telling them what to do on an hour by hour basis, for example, is the type of argument you would think you'd need to make in that case. So self-employed persons who are in business for themselves aren't household employees. Usually you aren't a household employer if the person who cares for your dependent spouse d does so at his or her home or place of business. So clearly the biggest indication that it's not an employee would be they're not coming to our home and then I tell them what to do in the home. Th instead, we're taking the person who's having the care to them and therefore it looks more like a contractor situation. So for example, nannies are generally household employees while daycare centers are not because nannies are in the home, daycare centers are outside of it. So if you use a placement agency that exercises control over the work is done and how it will be done by a babysitter or a companion who works in your home, the worker isn't your employee. So once again, if you use a placement agency that exercises control. So now we're saying, I'm gonna have someone come into my home, but rather than me hiring them directly and then telling them exactly what to do, I'm hiring them through an agency. Now, so one of the benefits of using that intermediary agency is that you're saying, well, now the, they're basically working for the agency, right? So they're not my employee, and that might help to alleviate having to deal with the household employee situation where you would have to deal with like the tax situation. So once again, if you use a placement agency that exercises control over the work is done and how it will be done by a babysitter or a companion who works in your home, the worker isn't your employee. This control could include providing rules of conduct and appearance and requiring regular reports. In this case, you don't have to pay employment taxes, but if an agency merely gives you a list of sitters and you hire one from that list and pay the sitter directly, the sitter may be your employee. So if you have a household employee, you may be subject to. So note, if they are a household employee as opposed to a contractor, that's when things get more difficult and we might be subject to social security and Medicare taxes. This becomes an issue in and of itself because usually in an employee-employer situation, there is an employee and employer part of Social Security and Medicare, which increases uh, the cost of things, number one. You have to calculate these, number two, which is basically going into payroll taxes, which is somewhat uh, complex to calculate. And then number three, you might be hiring someone who possibly is is not a citizen in some cases, in which case the, the social security benefits they wouldn't be receiving. So there's questions as to how to deal with that situation in terms of how, they, how should they be paying into the social security system if they're not getting a benefit from the social security system. Then you've got the federal unemployment tax. This is an employer portion uh, of, of the tax that's not, that people aren't usually familiar with if they've normally just worked as a W-2 employee because it's not something that comes out of your wages, but rather is a pure employer tax that has to be paid because of payroll taxes on the basis of employee wages. And then of course, you've got the federal income tax withholding, which also becomes confusing because when we think of federal income taxes, we're often as the employer thinking about our federal income taxes that we have to pay but here, of course, we're talking about the federal income taxes of the employees that we are forced to now act as the tax collector, taking the money out of their pay before they receiving it. 
and giving it to the government on their behalf. And then there's a question of how much do I deduct and so on and so forth, which typically in a normal business is done with the help and use of a W-4 form. So Social Security and Medicare taxes are generally withheld from the employee's pay and matched by the employer. So now you have the if you're a W-2 employee, you're probably used to the idea of this being taken out of your paycheck, Social Security and Medicare. But that's only half of it. The actual payroll taxes side of things for the business is their half of the Social Security and Medicare. Federal unemployment tax called FUTA uh, tax is paid by the employer only, only and provides for payments of unemployment compensation to workers who have lost their job. So again, most people aren't familiar with this unless they've dealt with payroll because it's not coming out of your paycheck as a W-2 employee, but is a payroll tax on the employer side. Federal income tax is withheld from the employee's total pay if the employee asks you to do so and you agree. Now notice the employee asks you to do so. It's not exactly like that normally in a work situation, the government is kind of forcing the employer to withhold the wages, but has to give the autonomy of the employee to calculate the withholdings, typically with the use of a W-4 form calculation. So for more information on the household employer's tax responsibilities, you can see publication 926 and Schedule SF, or I'm sorry, Schedule H, Form 1040 and its instructions. All right, tip. So you must check either the yes or no box on form 2441 line one column D to indicate whether or not your care provider was your household employee during the year. So note that if you put like someone's social security number as opposed to a daycare center with an EIN number on your tax return and you say that they're not a household employee, you would think that might give more of a red flag to the IRS to say maybe I should double check on that and see whether they're a household employee or not because if they audit you they're going to be looking to have them as a household employee so they can make you into their tax collector right so you have to be aware of that and ready in the event that that is a possibility that could happen and you need to defend your stance on the return in the event that it does state employment taxes you may also have to pay state unemployment tax for your household employee so obviously we're talking about federal income taxes here. We've moved over from federal income taxes to payroll taxes, which have a federal component, including social security, Medicare, federal unemployment tax. But you can also have state taxes that you have to deal with, deal, deal with depending on the state you're in. So contact your state unemployment tax office for information. So you should uh, also find out whether you need to pay uh, or collect other state employment taxes or carry workers' compensation insurance. For a list of state unemployment tax agencies, visit U.S. Department of Labor website at, and here's a website you could check that out at. You might also, possibly software can help you out with this. So if you have to deal with payroll, then usually in small businesses, dealing with payroll is something that you kind of have to pay for, even if it's a very basic payroll situation, meaning, if you're calculating Social Security, Medicare, federal unemployment tax, and state taxes, even with a one employee, you can make problems and typically have to pay for, for software to kind of help you with the internal controls to do those calculations. Uh, so like a QuickBooks or something like that might be something to, to uh, look into because doing payroll taxes by hand uh, is not something most people often do these days because I think what happened is basically payroll taxes was fairly basic and then as the computers have become more sophisticated, the government wants more information. Therefore, the tax system has come become more complicated and now again, fairly basic or simple employee-employer situations have somewhat complex or easy to mess up uh, tax calculations uh, for it. So in any case, if you have to deal with that, you can dive into some of these resources for more detail.